I'm gonna be giving you guys the one-on-one -on, -one on how to be the perfect student. A lot of questions on how I stay so focused, how to get motivated during exam season. Overall, you guys have just been asking for a lot of tips and advice on how to achieve these things. As someone who has been a student with like a 4.0 to a 2.5, I have learned it all. Basically, I'm gonna be your big sister when it comes to everything school related. I kind of wish I had someone like this in my first years of college that would just tell me that things can be a lot easier if you let it be. So with that being said, let's get into today's video. Pound it. Also subscribe. Before anything, I want to share some big sister advice. There's a lot of pressure going into college or university that you have to know exactly what you want to do for the rest of your life, which I feel like is almost impossible at such a young age. There are a lot of societal pressures, big word <laughs> for me at least. When it comes to college, I feel like we have to live up to the standards of graduating in four years, sticking to one major. And this is my personal advice. It may not be applicable to everyone because we're all in different life circumstances. Choose a route that you have some sort of like interest and passion in, or better yet, try new things, passions, hobbies to figure out what it is you'd be interested in pursuing. I've come across so many people who change their major halfway through, which is not a problem. You know, you learn from the experience. It's currently me. You don't always have to live up to the standards. You need to go at your own pace. You may need to take longer to graduate. That's completely fine. Okay, now we can get into the video. Step one to becoming the most idealistic, the perfect student, of course, is gonna be organization. Without having some sense of organization for your life, I feel like nothing else will fall into place. With us being in school, this applies 10 times more. So that's where Notion comes into play. I used to be into physically planning stuff with like a planner. I always still use a lot of my journals. I just find that having my things planned out digitally works so much better because most of the times we already have something on hand. I'm gonna show you guys how I organize everything on Notion and as well do it with you guys because I have yet to start planning out the month of February. First, we're going to start by deleting all the old stuff from the month of January and bring in a clean weekly to-do list. I will link the tutorial I watched below if you'd like to replicate this entire Notion page that I have here. There, I also learned how to add GIFs and cute Notion covers that help personalize the space. I also believe that once you learn all the ways that you can use Notion in your everyday life, it really becomes more valuable and fun to work with. I like to be extra and I like to have two other pages dedicated to two separate to-do lists. I have this page that originally was just to like organize my school schedule, but I ended up putting this updated to-do list and it resets every week. So like I just end up deleting whatever it was from the previous week and each class is there. Also, I feel like my forehead is just shining through today. And then we have my everyday to-do list. And the reason why I have this is just to see exactly what I have to do that day, just because I forget things very easily. Because I'm really forgetful and I used to forget assignment due dates. I find that it helps to actually see the assignment with its due date set in front of me. Luckily our school system already has a calendar and like a to-do list that updates every week. If you've been struggling to meet your due dates, it might help to have a Google calendar or a physical one so that every time you get an assignment you can put it in there. It's set right in front of you like you're constantly being reminded about it. So you do not have an excuse now to forget an assignment. You guys know or organization has been one of my biggest struggles. I feel like I have come a long way since last year, even though that was only like a month ago. There is literally nothing that interesting about school without having cute accessories. I look forward to bringing, showing off. You guys know me, I love having like cute decorations. Obviously when it comes to school, I wanna have the cutest backpack, the cutest pencil case. I find them usually on like AliExpress, Timu. You will literally find affordable options there and they're cuter. That's where I got my backpack from and this backpack has got a good amount of compliments already. This one's just like a cream backpack. It was, I think, less than $20. So I will find a link for this. It literally has three openings the big opening that also has like a little uh, has a laptop slot and then it has another opening the last opening which is like a little mini one which is perfect for like your little chapstick oh here here's my keychain and then of course we have a pencil case this one comes in different colors here i have my pencil here are my highlighter in this pouch i just have like other stuff uh, there's literally another opening over here which i didn't even know i don't even know what can we use this for oh, no, oh, oh. 
I don't even know what this is used for. I've seen this on cases, and I don't know. Anyway, so get a pencil case because people will think you're smart for some reason. Of course, we have my lovely headphones. These ones are by Bose. They go on the head really nicely. The color is just stunning. I feel like a lot of college students at least own a pair of headphones because it gives the peace of being in their own world. No one has to bother them if they really don't want people to talk to them. You guys know I do have an iPad. You can also rent a MacBook from the school. I don't know if it's specifically a MacBook, but like a laptop if your school has that option. They might have an iPad as an option as well if that's like something you'd like. But I have the iPad, I want to say it's like or fifth generation Pro. Recently, I just picked up the Magic Keyboard, which has served me a lot. Has served me a lot. I've already written all my notes through the iPad. I take my iPad only to school now. Like, I don't take my laptop. It's a lot heavier. I also have this cute little pencil case for my, my, uh, my, 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 uh, my iPad pencil. What are these called? This case, I've got also compliments on. It just attracts the eye. You just feel like you're actually writing with a pencil. Brings you back to elementary school, which I feel like we all wish we could go back there. If you're anything like me, you may have heavily decorated your iPad. So that's what I did. Bing! Look at that. She is beautiful. If the cute accessories increase your productivity, make school a little bit easier. Sometimes they are worth it. Ow! I really have scissors. Oh my god. <gasps> this is way bigger than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> oh my Oh my god, that sounds beautiful. talked a lot about organization and how important that is but under that follows systems and discipline the things that you have set in place that work best for you a lot of you guys have mentioned you struggle with being able to focus and a lot of people attribute that difficulty to their environment that they are in you find that you are someone that falls into this category it might be best that when you are choosing to get assignments done and study maybe get out of the house go to a coffee shop maybe to the library also find yourself slacking to get things done often going straight to the school library after class literally forces you to get it done because like what's the point of going to the library otherwise we have like study rooms here and these little private boxes most of the time these rooms are being used this is like a score because i've never been able to get into one of these being in a setting with other people that are also aiming to achieve the same goals motivates me to be in the same mind space as everyone else also you guys see i'm sitting at my desk right now one thing i like to do is i always clean up my desk before i start work This just gives me a more clear mind going into working. I don't have any distractions in front of me. Even though this guy right here is really distracting, I also put my phone on do not disturb whenever I'm studying. Or what I'll do is I'll just put it in a different room. I know a lot of you guys said that you get distracted by your phone. This is something that you're gonna have to push for yourselves. Limit the amount of time you're using your phone. That starts with you reaching for your phone the first thing in the morning. I've noticed a huge difference in my day when I start the morning morning off by getting a few tasks done versus when I wake up and allow myself to scroll my phone within the first hour of waking up. The difference in productivity, awareness, mental health is so significant. One of the things that I've noticed is I can go a few hours without having to reach for my phone, which is something that I would struggle with when studying. I do want to talk about this a lot more in a future video, so right now I won't go too in-depth about this, but essentially stay off your phone. I encourage you to try this tomorrow morning for the first one to two hours and see how much of a difference it'll make that does bring me to taking breaks taking breaks for me is actually really important when it comes to my study sessions what i like to do is i like to go for as long as i can and then once i've reached my limit where i can tell my focus has just completely gone down i will take a break in that time i'll kind of just do a task that doesn't work my mind as much sometimes i'll edit like a thumbnail watch a productive youtube video i think that's really important in order to actually study effectively understand everything that you're reading about Hold up, I've heard a lot of hype about the Pomodoro time management technique I decided to try it out myself and see what all the hype is about I 
used the Life at Spaces browser to start my work session. This is my first time using it, so I'm not entirely familiar with it yet. But I got to play around with all the different spaces and use the Pomodoro timer. This feature is a set timer that follows the Pomodoro technique. The initial timer is set to 20 minutes. And once that time is up, it follows with a five minute timer for a short break. Under the technique, you follow this three times. After that time, you take a longer break that is supposed to be 30 minutes. Personally, I still like the method that I use. I just found myself using the break times to finish the tasks that I had already started or just edit my videos, which is still considered work. Overall, we still had a productive work session and got to cross everything off our to-do list. It is shown to be highly effective as it helps you effectively manage your time and work on a task without distractions. Another thing that I'm going to advocate to you guys is that you start using Grammarly. If you are not using Grammarly, I think you're just making your life a lot more difficult, especially as a student. I'm currently writing an essay and I have three grammatical errors that can be reviewed. Literally, all I do is go in here and change every single one of them. I have been using them so much on all of my assignments, essays, a lot of discussions, and I think this has saved me so much time. Also, you probably are gonna get a better letter grade on whatever assignment that is because it's written properly. Another thing that I like to do is use a split screen on my computer or my iPad. I will have my doc app open on one side and then on the left side, I'll have my textbook open so I can effectively take notes and it goes by a lot faster. I think this is a game changer personally. Let's quickly talk discipline because I think we all like a little bit of it. The reason why I wanted to talk discipline is because a lot of you guys always ask, how am I so motivated? This past semester, I have stuck to being more disciplined than like motivated. The definition of motivation... <laughs> But discipline, the practice of training people to obey rules, using punishment to correct disobedience. That's, that's not really, not how, really I how I think of it. I see it as needing to stay consistent in order to prevent future problems and basically to get where I wanna be in life. Being discipline is gonna look something like consistently turning in your work on time without allowing yourself to procrastinate that assignment, not leaving all of your studying to the last minute. So maybe weeks before you'll study on every Monday before the exam. One of my goals this semester is to have all A's and B's in my class and in order for that to happen, I have to be disciplined. I can't rely on motivation. I think that it can only get you so far. What happens when the thing that you are motivated by is no longer there? Are you just are no, you longer, no motivated? longer motivated? <laughs> Aiming to be disciplined rather than just relying on motivation just builds you up as a better student, which in the long run will help you with your future career. I just threw on a little bit of makeup right now. Kind of want to get something to eat. Like, I'm so hungry. Something that I've yet to talk about in this video, but I feel like is probably one of the most important things is having a healthy balance when it comes to school and your personal life. Last school semester, I talked a lot about burnout, and that's because I was constantly, constantly burnt out. Burnt out the time I did not know how to balance everything on my plate at once instead I was just like I don't regret any of that I think if anything it has taught me how I can do that now to not take everything all on at once as students it's so easy to just put school at the top of our priority list in college you have so much free time to learn about yourself try new things this semester I am putting myself first knowing when to say no to things and not letting myself get to the point where I feel like I have just exhausted my myself to the max. I'm doing this by setting healthy boundaries. I am not gonna let school take up more than 50% of my life. How I like to think about it is I will allow school to take up at least 35% of my life. Like 20 to 30 it goes to my own passions, hobby, personal goals, and the rest should go to time spent with family, friends, or yourself, self-care. Another thing is that time should go to your physical and mental health. I hate to say that there was a point where I would go like halfway through the day without eating because I would spend my entire morning and afternoon just studying and doing homework you shouldn't be neglecting your appetite set time in the morning to have some breakfast read a book every day you should do something for yourself it might make it easier to set time blocks for your days and weeks maybe on like a saturday you will always go get some groceries so that you have food for the next week as students, our time can be limited and we can forget about taking care of our basic needs. I will be doing a future video on what I eat in a week as a busy college student, but for now, I thought I'd give you some ideas for your next grocery haul. Psicologo.
yummy. Bone broth doesn't really have much flavor to it. I also have not ate broccoli in a long time. We are eating a treat today with ranch because otherwise it literally just tastes like grass. Oddly enough, these are like quite satisfying to eat. I don't know what it is. It's just the crunch. I just made this little bowl of pasta. It looks a lot fancier than it really is because it's just Parmesan cheese and some chili powder. But I do have some leftover salmon that... Doesn't look as appetizing, but I'm gonna throw it in here to add some protein. If you just need like a quick meal, like to fill you up, this is gonna be it. I could eat pasta midday and then kind of just be like full for the rest of the day. Also, pasta is cheaper. It's gonna be like two to even like four dollars. If you do wanna go healthy, there is whole grain options, even though I hated that as a kid. My dad would make me eat it all the time. Maybe one time out of a month, you go like get your nails done and have a little girl's day. This is just a reminder that not everything has to be about school, nor does it have to be about anything else that you are currently just focusing on. I would feel this way even when it came to YouTube. I was just putting all of my eggs in that basket and focusing all of my time on it. And at the end of the day, I'd be like, I haven't seen my friends in like two weeks. <laughs> you need that support system. You need that love and care. Whether it's going out with friends or staying in and watching a movie, go to the gym, go on a date. Girl, you need to go on a date. You have to let yourself have some fun and also find time to be at peace because school is so stressful. Remember, you don't have to say yes to every social event. Saying no is probably gonna be your best bet sometimes. That does remind me, I am supposed to be somewhere right now. That is the end of today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed me talking a lot about how to succeed as a school school can be a struggle but i truly believe that if you do it the right way it can be fun and there's so much to learn from it i hope you guys have a beautiful day i would love for you guys to subscribe to my channel if you enjoy this type of content hugs and kisses